Prior to working in the syringe exchange, I spent uh, seven or six, seven years working in the field of drug treatment. And one of the things I found over and over again in the field of drug treatment was I had a, a high number of patients who didn't do well uh, based on programmatic standards. So they had a difficulty uh, coming to meetings or going to group or they failed drug screens. And because they didn't meet those criteria, those benchmarks for success, they were discharged out of treatment. So what I saw repeatedly was people unable to meet the definition of success in drug treatment, they would get discharged, and there really was no place for them to go uh, where they could engage in a level of care, uh, any level of care where they receive services or where their mental physical health could be protected. And so, you know, when the syringe exchange, uh, the idea of the syringe exchange opened up in Louisville, that's something I wanted to be a part of because I recognized it as that, um, as a safety net below treatment for people who, uh, who needed care, who weren't going to be successful uh, in a treatment program because they weren't ready, willing, or able to, there was a place in syringe exchange for them to have that. You know, three years later, being in syringe exchange for three years, what I've come to realize is that you know, syringe exchange isn't a safety net for treatment. Syringe exchange actually is treatment itself um, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I think the main reason is if we look at across um, the, whole, the whole spectrum of, of, med of the medical treatment of physical disorders, uh, we often treat symptomology and we call it treatment. So I can have high blood pressure or I can have asthma or I can have diabetes and I can make no behavioral changes and just be given medication to control my symptoms and it'll be billed for and reimbursed as treatment for that condition. And even in mental health, if we look at things like depression and anxiety, people aren't required to engage in uh, behavioral health services. They can simply just get a prescription for Xanax or Wellbutrin and that gets billed for and reimbursed as treatment. All of those different things address symptomology. And in syringe exchange, a big part of what we do is address symptomology. We you know, reduce the spread of diseases, uh, reduce uh, infections, things like that. Um, and we help people reduce HIV, hepatitis C, things that are making them sick. And so oftentimes in syringe exchange, we, we address symptomology. And to me, that's treatment just like it is with uh, in mental health or in physical health and other areas. Um, and so where I used to look at it as a safety net that was kind of below treatment, now I recognize that syringe exchange really and harm reduction services as a whole, they really are treatment. Um, and they're treatment that kind of is at the lower end of the continuum. It's a place for people to begin to engage in treatment or maybe they've engaged in treatment but some things have happened and they've kind of fallen down that continuum. There's always a place for them to land. I think the biggest thing to remember is approximately 9 out of 10 people uh, who are diagnosed or who would be diagnosable with a substance use disorder, they don't go to treatment, they don't seek care. Only one out of 10 people actually seek out help. And that's not one out of 10 people get better, but that's just one out of 10 people who would be clinically diagnosed with a substance use disorder actually go get help for their substance use disorder uh, in specialty treatment. So when I look at syringe exchange, we're there for the other nine out of 10 people who either aren't seeking treatment or aren't able to be successful in treatment and we provide an opportunity for them to keep themselves safer, uh, but then additionally to work on other issues that eventually will lead them to go back into treatment and engage in recovery.